Yeah. So IV bags, uh, they are definitely one of the most challenging product package formats to develop and implement, develop, validate, and implement a routine CCI method for. They have kind of all the things going against them from a limitations perspective, and we can run through that. Uh, so first of all, IV bags, typically they're pretty large. Um, you know, we have tested IV bags up to even five liters, for example. Um, and so size is one of those things that we take into account when we look at CCI because it can impact the test method that we choose. I can't take a five liter IV bag, for example, and put it on an HVLD. The sample area is just too small. It's not set up for that. So just like I can't put that IV bag inside of an HVLD, I can't necessarily put it inside of a headspace analyzer either. Um, I can't necessarily helium leak test that liquid filled bag because one, it's filled with liquid and two, it's made out of a flexible polymeric material that'll probably just let helium pass right through it pretty quickly. Um, so they're large, they're liquid filled and they're plastic and flexible. Uh, so when we think about vacuum decay, you know, those three things have an impact on our ability to perform vacuum decay as well. Um, larger the sample, the larger the chamber volume is, means you need more leakage to rise the, or to raise the pressure inside that chamber in order to find that leakage. Um, the plastic that that bag is made out of contributes to outgassing. So all the gas and moisture that's trapped in and on that plastic will come out under vacuum. The more surface area that we have, the more outgassing will happen. Um, and then there's the liquid side of things. So we still have challenges with liquid clogging, etc. And so relative to, let's say, liquid inside of a glass vial or liquid inside of a small flexible pouch or some other type of product inside of a similar type of package system like a bag, Liquid inside of an IV bag really kind of checks off all of those major limitations for a lot of the instrumentation that we have available. So historically, there were not great uh, methods available for IV bags, IV bags specifically. Um, and for that reason, a lot of folks, even today, still rely on uh, old methods like Thai ingress. Um, but even there, that has challenges as well. So dye ingress has a, its own host of challenges, which I don't think we're gonna go into detail on today, but are well established um, and discussed quite a lot over the past few years, 10 years even, going back to uh, the 1207 revolution. Um, but if you imagine, again, that really large IV bag being submerged in dye, if you have a very small leak, a leak that might risk loss of microbial uh, or a sterile barrier rather, you're going to need a good amount of dye to make it into that five liters of test solution before you can actually detect that dye. For that same small defect, you're only going to get a certain amount of liquid through that size defect over a certain amount of time, right? Under certain test conditions. And so if we have that certain amount of dye going into a small volume, like a 50, 50 milliliter IV bag, I can probably see that dye sooner. But if I have that same small amount of dye going into a five liter IV bag, well, now it's gonna take a lot more dye getting into that package before I can even see it. Um, and so dye ingress has its own set of challenges, not unique to uh, IV bags, but made worse by large volume IV bags specifically. So this has become increasingly relevant over the past few years um, with the advent of a lot of cell and gene therapy products, which are put into bag systems. Um, and oftentimes these are stored at cryogenic temperatures, liquid uh, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen vapor phase, sometimes minus 80. So now, you know, that's adding a whole nother layer to the things that we would typically consider from a CCI strategy design perspective is the cold storage side of things. And often these bags are underfilled. So to account for the expansion of that product when it's frozen, they usually will underfill them. So the type of IV bag that you might see saline, you know, in a hospital setting uh, would look very different when it's for that application, cell gene therapy type application and it's underfilled. Um, but largely those have the same limitations from the technology perspective. So how do we go about overcoming that? This is an area of much development uh, currently. 
This is a pretty hot industry trend. Uh, a lot of people are trying to evaluate ideal solutions and improve the available solutions for IV bag systems. So here at CS Analytical, uh, we have uh, a host of technologies that we can use to evaluate IV bag systems. And just like any other package system, it's a matter of evaluating which one is suitable for that purpose, for that specific use case. So for example, I mentioned vacuum decay. We do have uh, vacuum decay systems here with different chambers made for different size IV bags. Typically that's custom designed for a client's specific product. Uh, and so we can evaluate the feasibility of using vacuum decay for these applications. Um, and then of course develop and validate if it is in fact feasible. For these really large bags where testing by vacuum decay does not necessarily yield suitable sensitivity, we've also developed an internal solution here using a compression-based method. So in this particular case, we evaluate bags for leakage um, by compressing them under constant force for a certain amount of time. So we use our Instron universal testing machine to go in, we have a platen that the bag sits on, a top that comes down and compresses that bag to a, a certain force that we determine in method development, dwells there for a certain amount of time. On both sides of that chamber, we have a reactive paper. So if any liquid were to come out of that bag system, it would react with the paper once it's absorbed and leave a very clear visual indicator that leakage had occurred. Um, this approach is sort of similar to what you might do by putting samples, IV bags, let's say, under vacuum and looking for dye egress, let's say, escaping from the package system. Uh, but by applying this controlled force, uh, we've had much better success in um, the consistency of our results. And by using this leakage indicating paper, we have much better consistency on operator identification of those failing results, because ultimately this would be a visual inspection method. Um, and so evaluating differences in operator ability to detect those samples uh, is a, a of course an important part of the validation process. So again, of course our deterministic method that is vacuum decay is the preferable approach. Um, and we would start there with feasibility, uh, looking at the ability to perform vacuum decay on those IV bag systems. But if and when we determine experimentally that a deterministic method is just not feasible for this particular IV bag system, we might look to a probabilistic method such as visual inspection after um, liquid, uh, such as visual inspection um, for liquid egress under that compression condition. And we found that that particular custom approach uh, really worked out well for these large volume IV bags and had better detection of our positive controls than a lot of the instrument-based methods currently today. Um, however, like I said, this is a, a constantly evolving area. There's a lot of partners that we work with who are developing solutions for IV bag systems. And so I expect this to be something that continues to change over the next few years as these types of package systems become much more prevalent. So in considering some of these challenges for IV bags, again, it's similar with other package systems. It's a matter of evaluating what are the limitations imposed by this product package system? What are we trying to demonstrate about this product package system and its integrity? And how do we go about verifying that uh, throughout the product lifecycle? And again, whatever technology we're able to develop and validate a method for to evaluate these IV bags, it's about doing the best that we can do for that particular product package system. Characterizing those risks where we know that they might exist, and then looking what can we do to mitigate those risks, taking into account the limitations we might have as a result of the unique configuration for that system.